Uh, hoi anora, uh, e te iwi. Hei whakakapi ake uh, i tā tātou nei kaupapa, uh, ko tukuna atu uh, uh, ki tō tātou nei tāhuhu rangapū uh, o te puni kōkuri. Uh, ona pānga ki rota uh, ki au, ki a rongo whakāta, ki a taitanga maha ki hoki, me waikato. Uh, Michelle has led Tipuni Kōkiri's focus on Māori development since becoming the CE in December 2013, has been instrumental in leading the development of a whānau centred approach and ensuring that everything Tipuni Kōkiri does supports whānau to thrive. Uh, to present uh, a summit summary and the next steps, please welcome the CE of Tipuni Kōkiri, Michelle Hippolakt. Uh, kia ora no tato uh, ki roto i te whare. He honore mā te puni kōkiri i tonua tukia koutou haere mai, kōrero mai mo te kaupapa e whāriki nei a whānau ora. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I think I stand between you and us getting out of this building. Um, but if you do get a moment before you leave the building... Of course, I'm going to encourage you to go and see my iwi exhibition up on level four, the Rongo Whakata exhi exhibit, um, because this is a place where magic happens. And it's one of the reasons why um, Te Papa ended up being the place that we wanted to bring all those who were able to come today, because magic happens here. I know it does, I've worked here. And when I've got hōhā with people, I've been able to go out on the floor and look at all the beautiful stories and objects that exist. So if you have a moment, pop up to Level 4 to uh, learn a little bit more about one side of my people, the Rongofakata people. I've got about three messages for you, because um, I'm not going to try and summarise all the great things I've been hearing, watching your faces. It's been interesting to watch your reactions and when people are talking at a table or when you're listening to a speaker, because as we know, they can speak volumes about what we're thinking. So the first message I want to leave you with is Fano is me. And for, uh, I want to speak to my public service colleagues about Fano is me. Because today it starts with you. And you're probably thinking, but it's really them that are the problem. Them might be your manager, might be your chief executive, it might be colleagues in your other agencies, and you know what, you might be right. The them might be the ones holding you back. But if you can start with you, then we might be on the journey. Starting with you means, and I have assumed that you're all intelligent, but something that's been picked up on social media lately is that I've been saying intelligence is not enough. We need to be clever in what we are doing. And so we have to make, I'd like you to make meaning of what you were listening to today so that you can convert that into your work. Now for some of you that may mean thinking about what has been counted. For some of you that may mean understanding what questions you're asking yourself as you do your work. Whether you sit in a policy role, a delivery role, a monitoring role, a regulatory role, whether you're a budding analyst, whether you're leading development, whether you're a manager. We need you to have meaning of what you've been listening to today. Now that meaning does start with probably moving from thinking about an individual, and I'm not gonna suggest whānau at this stage because whānau means a whole lot of things to a whole lot of people, but I am gonna start you to think about moving from an individual to a household, whatever those households may be made up of. Um, our, ho our home at the moment is made up of um, my immediate whānau, and we've got two little whāngai. We've sought to understand what's going on in their whānau. Because this little six-year-old and 13-year-old uh, clearly have had some traumatic experiences. And we wondered, actually, at what points in the system did they have contact? We, we, locate, we discovered that they had a lot of contact. But the contact was without context. And so 
the work that we do happens to be public servants that they have had a lot of interaction with, uh, that to get meaning in their lives, we had to, uh, that I'm asking us, so I'm including me here, that if it starts with me, today I'm, I'm really going to try and understand what a whānau-centred framework means. And for those of, us, those of us who are wonks, we have to digest what does that actually mean, because I have been trained to think a particular way. I have been trained to learn things a particular way. And because I believe you are intelligent, you're on the pathway to cleverness. As you look for different tools that can influence and shape the way you ask questions and look for the insight, not just the data, the data tells us a misery story. The current data we collect is a lot of contact data, but again, doesn't provide some context. And while I missed some of the presentation today, the trick to head towards cleverness is trying to figure out how we understand context. Because often it's the context, not the individual alone, that will help on the journey that, the, that we have been learning about today. So that's first message, Fano is me. And if I can look through my eyes, what is it that I can think about and do differently to what I have been doing thus far today? My second message is that I am Fano. So this is not a theory that we're talking about today. The experiences that we hear from our commissioning agency colleagues is not a theory. It's a theory of plus practice, plus care. The panel that was sitting up here this morning, they spoke about um, uh, a number of things, including um, remembering that if we want to disrupt something, that we've got to take care about all the people whose lives we are, in our language, disrupting. I'm personally not an advocate of the language of disruption because I think we can um, create some unintended consequences. But yes, we need to have new thinking, absolutely. Um, and so, I am Fano means that I've, I've got to think through um, what I do to exemplify that we care. In fact, it's like, like Meripika was saying, thinking about how the Prime Minister talks about um, kindness and compassion. Um, because we as public servants, whether we realise it or not, do have a lot of impact in community outcomes. We might not see it today, but I can guarantee you might see it in five to ten years. So, I am Fano. The other reason I think I am Fano is important is because we are part of a movement. Helen presented the kaleidoscope, as did Awurangi, the kaleidoscope of time. And Minister, I think I have been part of a movement. And the movement is required because what has been happening since the 60s doesn't seem to make a lot of change for those whānau who, have, who live in certain circumstances. Now, I'm a big advocate for analytics, analytical thinking be, to be done based on circumstances first, then ethnicity after. And the reason I think that matters is that it might remove some bias Rather than looking at the Māori data or Pacific data and going, see, look how bad they do at school. Look how many of them are locked up in prison. Look how many of us are doing A, B, C. If we started by saying, what sort of circumstances have led to these, these outcomes? Of course, there are some trends, and these trends is what I call the misery data, poor income, poor education, you know, and, and the, the list goes on. Um, but if, and then, so let's, if we understood circumstance and then thought, right, how, if we, when we add ethnicity to that, there must be another layer of patterns 
that can make sure that our prejudice doesn't start at the beginning of our thinking, it probably comes in at the end. And I'm not suggesting that all of us are prejudiced, that all of us have different views, uh, that all of us have racist um, perspectives, but I would hope that as you take these steps towards understanding circumstances, it gives you access to context, then we can see how can we, how can we enrich Māori culture to be the catalyst of change for those whānau. Finally, I do whānau. And what, what, what does that mean, I do whānau? It means that if, if I was to talk at the end of my performance review year, and we're heading towards that, you've got three months left, two months, how would you be able to exhibit and show that you've understood the concept that we've talked about today? What looks different in the way you prepare any advice for ministers? What looks different in the way you coach and work with the people in your team? What looks different for things that you might commission? What looks different for how you might work with others um, on giving effect to I am Fano, Fano is me, and I do Fano. It may be really simple, but we know we're all motivated, we're sort of creatures of wanting to make a difference and make a change. So if we were to contact you in four months' time, maybe we'll do that, Nance. <laughs> what difference has coming together today to learn about a policy framework, to learn about the place of data, which is not just numbers, many of us know, it's insight, knowledge, uh, perspectives, uh, to learn about different collaborative models, um, to understand the work of commi commissioning agencies and bless them for the work that they have been doing on behalf of the kaupapa. Uh, in four months' time, can we make one shift up that potama? I would like a revolution, but I'm a realist as well. So if we can start with us, do something better or different that exemplifies uh, what Fano means to me. Yes, I want you to learn about the outcomes. I want you to do all of that. But unless you're going to own it, it's going to be somebody else's words. So my widow or my invitation to um, public sector colleagues, not that I'm not thinking about you, community colleagues, iwi colleagues, but for this moment, if you could pick up that arco that's sitting right there on this pulpit, if you could take it back to your ministry, to the commissioning, uh, to the children's commissioner, if you could take it back to wherever you work, on whatever kaupapa you work, it may be hard. I expect it to be hard, otherwise it's not worth it. Um, and we have a team that could be here to support and help you to do that, because actually I know a number of you are doing it in your work at present. So if I do whānau, I hope that you spread the movement and spread the word. Don't start with your chief executive, start with your colleagues. Go to your managers. Talk with the people on your floor. Then talk with the people in your rohe and build the movement bit by bit. is uh, gonna be around forever. I certainly hope it will be around forever. Um, and I, I have confidence that if we do this step by step, bit by bit, start with ourselves, make sure that we can give effect to it and demonstrate and show others uh, we're on that journey that Minister Henare talked about. And I'm hopeful in 2040, uh, that's when we projected to the to Honourable Knight Nanaia Mahuta and Honourable Hini Penare, by 2040, here are some things that we would hope have changed. We cannot do that by ourselves. I see you as direct partners and collaborators in being able to exemplify the aspiration that is embedded in the outcomes, that reflects all the whānau kōrero.
Because one thing I do know as a result of what happened last week, there were three common words, aroha, it's Muslim people talking about this, whānau, uh, I can't remember the last one that I've said three, but those two are, uh, are starting to become the lexicon of most New Zealanders. What we need that to do is to be more than just a word, but actually start to imbue the essence of what sits under the iceberg, not what we can see, but what we don't see. Because I think this is, we're on a pathway to greatness, as Awarangi, Helen and Debbie have talked about, uh, that can help shape an Aotearoa New Zealand that is ready for whatever, it, whatever is coming its way. So with those few words, um, thank you for coming to join us today. You could have done a whole lot of other things. We had wondered about two days and thought you might not have come. So we're grateful that you made the time to just join us for a few hours. Um, see this as a stepping stone to doing more and learning more. And for those who have travelled to Wellington, haven't we turned on a great day for you? It's a rare occasion, like an eclipse, so take care of it. Um, and finally, can I acknowledge Minister Mahuta, Edna, and her sister Kitty Kofai, Mikaire, Darren Bishop, Dr. Dr. Amor here, Bolton, Di Grinnell, Jeff Short, Hirawini Tekoha, the Tuna Fano from home, Pat Nathan, our well-being whānau policy te puni, Helen Meripeka, Debbie, Dr Kiki, Awerangi and Minister Henare. They've all taken the time to share with us some insights. And I know that um, whoever takes up after me has got some, I, I would say, some great foundations set. And may they have the courage that is required to keep going forward to circuit break, to find different ways to help us as a country to continue to go on this pathway, of course I'm going to say of greatness. Kia tātou i roto i te whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa.